to Cairo Hustle. Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession on the world's number one chiropractic podcast. Before we dive into this powerful episode, please remember to subscribe to our channels and give us a five-star rating on iTunes to continue hustling. This episode is sponsored by the Transact Card, Align Life, Brain-Based Health Solutions, Cairo HD, Imaging Services, Cairo Health USA, Cairo Moguls, Pure Cairo Notes, Titronics, German College of Chiropractic, New Patients in a Box, Life Chiropractic College West, Pro Hockey Cairos, Pro Baseball Cairos, the IFCO, and 100% Chiropractic, Let's Hustle. Hey guys, welcome to episode 552 of the Cairo Hustle podcast. I'm your producer, Luke Millette, and here's your host, James Chester. So today we had the opportunity of interviewing Crystal Badorf. And if you want to hear a story about vision for communities and inspiration through chiropractic care, stay tuned. Welcome back. This is another episode of the Cairo Hustle podcast. Today I have Crystal Badorf coming on. Uh, really excited. We're going to talk a lot about family. We're going to talk a lot about pregnancy. We're going to talk a lot about uh, vision and value. And I think these are things that a lot of people need to have uh, access to, and they need to start to understand what they actually have in front of them for their life and others. Um, but before we jump into Crystal's story, uh, I'm going to let you know the big why. Why do we do what we do over here at Cairo Hustle? Well, first things first is freedom of speech. Um, as we all know, over the past couple of years, that's been something uh, that's been stymied. It's been something that has been shadow banned. It's been something that has been manipulated. So we do believe in the Second Amendment. Freedom of speech is very important. And on the backside of that comes medical freedom and family health freedom. And I know we're going to talk a lot about those topics today. And family health freedom and medical freedom are not the same things. You have freedom of choice to determine how you raise your families, what goes in their bodies, and how they perpetuate their futures. Um, Then we get into the chiropractic philosophy part of the show. Um, We do protect the sacred trust, BJ Palmer's last words. If you don't know what that means, go and find BJ Palmer's sacred trust. Do your search right now. Stop the show. Go and look and see what that means. You'll learn more about chiropractic than you ever previously did, I guarantee you. And you'll probably fall in love with this profession more than you ever did before also. Um, On the heels of that, we do support subluxation-based chiropractic, and we believe in innate intelligence and universal intelligence. We believe that when man or woman, the physical, gets adjusted, it connects them to man or woman, the spiritual. And with that being said, Crystal, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, I know we we had quite the introduction uh, before we started the show today talking about all things that mattered to you. Yes. And I think that it's really important uh, that we get a chance to like understand each other before we actually do a show, because I, I believe that there has to be a resonance of our message so that the people that are listening to it understand the significance of this chiropractic uh, profession. Absolutely. So my favorite question that I always lead with is your story. How did you get into chiropractic? Well, so I got into chiropractic in my mid twenties when I actually suffered um, a brain virus called a vestibular neuroneuritis and lost my ability to walk and stand and uh, was going through um, a string of medical um, appointments and not seeing results and so I was referred to a chiropractor where I was living and through chiropractic adjustments, I started getting better. And then it, we just started learning more about the power of chiropractic care. And that just started a journey of a healthier lifestyle for our family. So your body adapted. Yes. Um, what was life like before chiropractic? Um, I would say that my mobility was definitely different, um, but it was also one of those things, you don't know what you don't know. And the education that I had always heard of about chiropractors was that 
was kind of like their their quats or that's just snap crackle pop and it was more fear based versus education so the greatest impact that chiropractic care allowed for us was more education about how our bodies actually function when um after we've had our adjustments and uh, fixed any of the subluxations that are going on in our body. Background, I was a biology uh, minor in college. And so I had some education of the chemistry and biology of how our bodies work, but it wasn't until we really started diving into personal usage of chiropractic care that I was able to see a different perspective and a different modality into uh, holistic options for your body um, and and the results you get going forward. Yeah. And I, I mean, just having a further conversation on it, like life before chiropractic, um, how old were you again at your first adjustment? I think 26, 27. Yeah. And, you know, one of the things I, I, I know that's important to you is education, which you yes. said, and community involvement. Um, the guy I just interviewed before you, he got adjusted um, in utero. He, he's a chiropractic kid. Like he was born into chiropractic and he was adjusted. He's like, while the umbilical cord was still attached, like what would life have been like for you if that would have been your course of life? Oh, it would have been very different. I was a preemie and I had a lot of medical issues growing up. And had I been adjusted early on, I think my overall health would have been a lot better. It was a chiropractor that uh, discovered that I had adrenal issues. Um, had I had the education and the opportunity to be adjusted as an infant, as a child, I think my um, long-term health would have been much different. So what's your message to moms that might be like toeing the line and thinking that chiropractors, like you said, might be quacks. Um, what, what would your message be to like expecting mothers or pregnant mothers or newborn like families? Like what would your message be to those women? You're taking care of your mind, body, and your spirit. And you want to provide the best care for your unborn child that you can. And by, getting adjusted during your pregnancy, it really helps with that neurological development with your child in utero as well. I am an adoptive mom and have, um, and my youngest son has had some in utero trauma. And even on the way home from the adoption agency, before we got home, he had his first adjustment. And he, it was a very different process with him from from the first day we got him um, than it was with my other children, that it's so necessary. Um, my daughter avoided um, surgery for to get tubes in her ears because of ear infections. I started getting chiropractic care for her. I think she was probably two. Um, one of my sons had bladder issues. He was a preemie. Um, chiropractic care helped with the bedwetting and all of that. So we did not have to have that surgery. So as moms, when you're looking at the overall care for your children, it's really important. Those bumps and scrapes and falls, it's really important for their development and for their brain to be able to process the information when you have those subluxations removed. Yeah. I mean, you think about it. Um, a lot of people that watch our show, they know that I've gone and done hundreds upon hundreds of marketing events for chiropractors and mm -hmm. helped get people in. I was just in Alaska. I was telling you at the Alaska State Fair, and uh, this lady comes up to me and she's like, looks like she hasn't slept in a few days. Um, she's pushing a stroller around and she's got like four kids with her. And, you know, they're at the fair. They're probably all hopped up on, you know, adrenaline from whatever they're going to do. You know, face painting, fair hair, eating whatever fried food that they serve out there. Like they're, they're experiencing that life. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the mom comes over to me and she brings her whole troop with her and she like tugs on my sleeve. Hey, um, I don't know if I want to come in for the chiropractic thing, but I heard that you guys can help with, uh, bedwetting. 
And I was like, well, you can still schedule your son. He was 10. And she's like, it's really having like an issue on like his social life and his confidence. And she's like, do you think you can help him? I said, here, I'm going to tell you this. What I want you to do is schedule the first visit. Come in. Let us do an exam. We'll do the consultation. We'll do the health history. We'll shoot x-rays if needed. Mm -hmm. Second visit, you're going to come back. What we're going to do is it's called the report of findings. We're going to tell you what we found on the exam and x-ray. We're going to tell you how much concern there is. We're going to tell you how we can help you. You get your first chiropractic adjustment on the second visit. If you think we're a good fit, you'll stick with us. Mm -hmm. If you come in and you think that everything that we're doing doesn't make sense to you, you don't have to stick around. But it could just change the trajectory of your son's future and yours. Mm -hmm. Is that something you like to do? Like, it was amazing because... People are looking for chiropractic. They just don't know it's called chiropractic. Yeah. And like you said, it prevented unnecessary surgeries for ear infections. It prevented unnecessary surgeries for other conditions. Mm -hmm. Like if you really think about the investment and in getting checked and detected and corrected for vertebral subluxation, it's a small investment and what it can do for the trajectory of one person's life at 26, like yours, or a child that's in the womb waiting to be delivered into this amazing world. Like there's a lot that goes into what a chiropractor does and how it can have an effect and help a person's lifestyle adapt mm -hmm. to a better quality of life. I think one of the things that was really interesting to me when I was, I attended Lyceum as a guest of a, a local chiropractor and Lyceum is Sherman Chiropractic's kind of. It's their just, homecoming. Their homecoming. Yep. Um, Dr. Hawk did a presentation on what it's like to adjust uh, children. And she brought the example of a banana with a couple of spots and saying, and then just push this so gently so that you barely leave an imprint when that flesh in the banana gives that's the amount of pressure that you're putting on a child and that was such a reality to me not being a chiropractor but being an advocate for it of it is so gentle and seeing the process of what it did for my my own children like you said i mean we were looking at medications and medications that would slow down urine production well our bodies are designed to detox. And that's one of the methods that we detox. We're going to give medication to slow that down. Think of all those toxins that would have built up in my son's system. I didn't want that. Well, I, I started out, Crystal, 15 years ago, mm -hmm. working in a chiropractic office. Mm -hmm. And I started seeing how people's lives were changing. And this is really like reminiscent to what I used to do. I used to go and interview patients and I do patient testimonials. And my first question I asked you was back to my roots 15 years ago. What was your life like before chiropractic? Okay. Mm -hmm. Second thing I'd always ask them, what's your life like since chiropractic? The last thing I'd ask them, would you refer your friends and family? And then I'd put together these little promos for the chiropractor and I'd interview 10 patients and now they'd have some marketing material to go out there and to show we take all walks of life and anybody that came in that would say, yeah, that we will, we'll, we'll do a, a three minute interview with you to promote this amazing chiropractor. Yeah. So that's how I started out like promoting this profession before the podcast, before the documentaries that we've made. And I was like really keyed in on, how can I get this message outside the four walls of this office? So when you were telling me your big, hairy, audacious goal, yes. like you want to create like the doctors in segments and tell people the story of why chiropractors are doing what they're doing, their technique and their values. Um, a lot of times the best thing is third party validation. So getting the actual patients to talk about why their life's improved, um, why they would refer their friends and family. Those are the real like powerful, like to me, that's, that's really the power source of the community movement. Absolutely. It's the moms. Like a lot of times people ask me like, well, what type of marketing event do you want? Okay. 
wherever there's the most strollers. Do you know yeah. why? Because moms are the decision makers for the family. Dads, they'll wait till their damn leg falls off. <laughs> like for real. Like they'll, they'll wait till they have to be delivered by an Uber with ice pack on their back to the chiropractic center in order to go get an x-ray that they're reluctant to pay for. That is so true. <laughs> but the women, and I know that's something that's really inspirational to you is working with adoption agencies and pregnancy centers yes. is women are the decision makers for the family. So if we can make an impact, I call it the brain tattoo. If we can tattoo the impact of chiropractic on the brain of that mom, now we can make an impact on the future of those kids. Mm -hmm. So I guess I'd like you to talk to me a little bit about how you would like to see what you're doing with chiropractic have an impact on people's communities. People's communities. Well, there's a lot. Um, we talked about the underserved uh, communities with women that are um, have unplanned pregnancies. I think a lot of them don't understand that chiropractic care is an option for their care. Um, I'm working with, um, I have, I have had four and I'll call them true crisis pregnancies within our family. And that's given me a passion for the adoption agencies, for, uh, the, uh, pregnancy centers. I've had services from both and see the need. But one of the things I was talking with a pregnancy center last week and, um, they have on their pr brochure that, about giving education about sudden infant death syndrome. And I said, did you know that chiro with chiropractic care that it decreases the chances of sudden infant death syndrome significantly? And she wasn't aware of that. And so that's one of the things they were going, okay, this is why we need to connect these services with local chiropractors, one, so that these moms can be seen, these babies can be taken care of. We have better health uh, care education that's given to them. Um, there's also a lot of uh, states that um, don't have an, enough birthing centers for their babies. That's another topic for another day, but really um, getting involved in the community, seeing the needs and being able to strengthen the overall health of our families. You made the Cairo Hustle. Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession on the world's number one chiropractic podcast. This episode is sponsored by Align Life, Brain Based Health Solutions, Cairo HD, Imaging Services, Cairo Health USA, Cairo Moguls, Pure Cairo Notes, Titronics, German College of Chiropractic. New Patients in a Box, Life Chiropractic College West, Pro Hockey Kairos, Pro Baseball Kairos, the IFCO, and 100% Chiropractic, let's hustle. So I always tell people this, uh, there's not a pillow, poster, or lotion that you can do to your body that will have the same impact of a chiropractic adjustment. And I do think that there's two doctors you should have in your life, right? There's one to keep you healthy and there's one to save you from dying. And as our health grades are been reported, we're 38th on the list of first world countries when it comes to like our health grade, like we're failing. But if you were to have like a crisis care, like you said, crisis pregnancies, if you were to have crisis care and you needed crisis care immediately, like emergency care, we're top at that. Yes. But keeping people like vital and healthy long-term, um, our system has sold out to the pills and potions and lotions people. And it's not about keeping people healthy. And you know why that is crystal? It's a money thing. I mean, there's no money in healthy people. Yeah. <laughs> there's and, and that's why we have to safeguard our families and their medical freedom and their family's health freedom. And that's why our show does what it does. And we have the standard that we do because I believe that there is an answer for people to have a healthy pregnancy. 
I believe that there is an answer for people to have healthy children. I believe that there is an answer for people that are advanced in life to have better quality of life and activities of daily living, which is what the insurance idiots look for. Um, I, I believe that there are answers and that all comes back to this one core principle and belief, which is chiropractic. Mm -hmm. When you have a regulated and functioning nervous system, the body self-regulates and self heals. Mm -hmm. It doesn't need anything extra in it. It simply needs no interference. So when you remove the interference, the body does this. Oh, <laughs> I'm glad somebody did that finally. Like, I'm glad somebody just like took care of that thing that was in my neck that I couldn't do on my own. Mm -hmm. And that's the power of chiropractic. One of the things I've also really observed, um, all of my children are athletes and for optimal performance, um, chiropractic adjustments have been necessary. Um, I mean, we've had broken bones. So my daughter um, had a broke, got a broken collarbone her very first soccer game. I mean, it was it was like this. It was significant. But she went through cold laser therapy. She went through chiropractic care, gentle adjustments on the neck and making sure the other shoulder wasn't overcompensating, continuing to cause more problems and more pain. Um, same, and, you know, my other sons, football, soccer. I mean, those are contact sports. And just being able to take them to get those adjustments, it keeps them in check. Um, they're able to, you know, um, perform at their optimal level and continue to thrive. Well, there's two different states, okay? You can live in a state of ease or you can live in a state of disease. And when you're in a state of ease, the body chills out and the body's nervous system has a chance to actually do what it's supposed to do rather than fight or flight. Mm -hmm. And then when the body's adjusted, the body gets a chance to go into parasympathetic mode where it actually calms down and it self-regulates and it self-heals and it chills out. A lot of times when people are subluxated, they're in peak state constantly and, and they're riding the wave of like fight or flight and scarcity, anger, all these low vibrational ideas and feelings. But when the body's actually nurtured and feels good and it's like regulated, that's when people can start dreaming again. So true. Well, and I'll tell you a, a story too with my current chiropractor. Um, she knows about, I, I lost two children um, and they were both in October and she's followed my care for a number of years and can tell, okay, in October, you're going to need more adjustments because your body is, it's, it's coming back with that stress and that trauma. Let's kind of keep that at bay. And then that's also given me a time to understand, oh, why am I so tense in October instead? But the education of, okay, here's this release, but also being aware of, okay, this trauma happened to your body. Here's where we're seeing some flares. Let's get on top of that so that you can still um, live your life to the fullest in, in that time frame. Well, there's three things that cause subluxation. Thoughts, traumas, and toxins. Mm -hmm. And there's power of auto suggestion also. What we continuously think is what we become. So if we think we're sick and broken, and if we think that there's stress, and if something gives us recall of trauma, we have become subluxated. So our body has a way of actually tight, tightening ourselves up and making us sick mm -hmm. if we think ourselves into it. That's why the power of the chiropractic adjustment can help us reposition that segment and that subluxation to where the body's actually back into alignment again. I know that was something that you wanted to talk about too, is like, how do you create a better culture? Well, you create a better culture by addressing the individual. Yes. And if you address the individual, whether they're at the top of the organization or there's somebody that's in the middle of the organization, or they're the child at home, or they're the kid in sports, whoever it may be, life is just going to be better when their culture understands that like, hey, I'm not feeling good today. What is it? Can I get checked? 
-hmm. And one of the things I love about chiropractic is they check, detect, and correct. And not every time that they check do they need to adjust. But I think because of today, the, the, the age that we're in, we're all hyper-stressed. Mm -hmm. We all have a lot more going on than a patient from the 1950s. So a person in the 1950s, they weren't bombarded with cell phones and technology. They weren't addicted to the food that we're eating today. They weren't driving around in automobiles the way we are today. There were different stressors in their life. Mm -hmm. So I think as culture shifted to where we are today, thoughts, traumas, and toxins look much different than they did 60 or 70 years ago. Yes. So to say that I need to get adjusted more frequently in the month of October, probably. Yeah. And kids that live on laptops and cell phones and tablets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've seen some of the most gnarly x-rays of kids that are like 12 years old. They have spines that look like they're 70. Because they're over like this. Yes. They look, we call it nursing home posture. Yeah. You know, text neck is now a diagnosis code for insurance companies. So when you think about like the level of like how our culture has shifted and to people saying, I, I don't want to take care of myself. It's too expensive. Why would I go see the chiropractor? It's too expensive. And that is your health insurance. Having a healthy spine and nervous system and mobility. What's the first thing you said? I couldn't stand up. Yes. I was having problems at 26 years old with my motor skills. Like go back to the square one. Yes. If people yes. just made that small investment, like your insurance company is not going to save your life. They don't care about you. Like the person that cares about you is a practitioner of chiropractic. We hear a lot about self-care and a lot of times you think that that's the massage. Yes, that's good. That's so for some people that's Botox. There's a lot of toxins with that. I won't get on that train, but really looking at for our family budget, self-care for our family budget is our family plan with our chiropractor. Amen. That is a non-negotiable. And so when we look and it's not covered by our insurance. That is something we choose to do. As far as, you know, going, what's going in your body, what's going on your body, understanding all the things. And that's one of the things more of our culture is going to is, okay, what is, what's going to give me the best health? Well, how do you know what's going to give you the best health? You learn that. And through, there's a lot of research, but we need to be more proactive in communicating more in our communities of why this is part. This is not a fix. This is not a visit. This is a lifestyle. It is going to continue to walk with you through your twists and turns, but this is self-care for long-term optimal health. It gets to the root of a lot of the problems where we don't have band-aids. Well, there's a guy that precedes me. His name is James Chestnut. I'm James Chester. Um, guys, uh, Van I think he's from Victoria or Vancouver, BC. Um, Canada. And he started this movement called eat well, think well, move well. A chiropractor. He went to the nutrition aspect of life, right? If you don't eat right, you don't think right. And if you don't eat right, you don't move right. So a lot of it comes back down to the building blocks of how mobile are we? Mm -hmm. What's our quality resource that we're actually feeding ourselves? And then how well, are you thinking throughout the process of it mm -hmm. back to auto suggestion? Do you think you're healthy? Do you think you can be healthy? Do you think that the food that you're eating is real fuel or do you think it's empty calories? Do you enjoy the things that you do with your body? Are you enjoying your hobbies? Are you enjoying your extracurriculars? Like how is your body moving for you? Do you enjoy hiking? Do you enjoy sport? Like, what are you doing to make your body move better? You know, a lot of the things I hear from people that are retired, they die because they stop moving mm -hmm. and, and life is motion. And that's the one thing that I'll go back to the root cause of what, why we do this show is because I want people to practice a chiropractic lifestyle. And the one thing that James missed, okay, 
eat well, think well, move well, coming from a chiropractor, I'll just put an asterisk next to it and get adjusted. Yes. And it's, it's not me outshining him or shining poorly upon his plan, but maybe if he started with get adjusted, eat well, think well, move well, we would have a different revolution right now than people that thought that they needed to eat different, that people thought that they needed to think different, that people thought that they needed to move different. And it all starts with the root of chiropractic. And if you have deep roots with the chiropractic lifestyle in your family, as you know now, mm -hmm. that is your health plan. And obviously there's crisis care. We need interventions. We're not idiots. And there is a doctor to keep you healthy and one to save you from dying. Absolutely. Well, and there's one thing um, you and I talked earlier about um, John Maxwell and being one of my mentors, but he says something experienced, um, evaluated experience. That's what makes the change. And so one of my challenges would be is, and some of the things that I do too, is I look at what we eat. I look at what we do and I evaluate it. If it served us well, then it gets color coded as a green. If it was kind of like, yeah, maybe a cheat. Uh, I mean, this goes with every activity, every activity that we do, food we eat, uh, places we go, color code them. If it's red and it was a negative experience or it's toxic in some way, we put a red and it goes. So this is a good way that you can you start doing an evaluation of going, okay, where am I now? And then where do I need to go? Mm -hmm. So in closing, if there was a, a big call to action for you to the chiropractic community, what would that be? Um, I have so many in my head. The big call to the chiropractic community is to really be authentic be authentic and connecting with our community members um, and what you, how you have to serve them. A lot of people still don't understand what chiropractic is all about. And a lot of times when I talk to doctors, sometimes the language can get to be more um, on the, on the, I'm going to say on the doc level, the language can be um, textbook in a sense bring that down to someone and explain to them a little bit more in depth of how this can transform your life. Use this as a self-care option. Um, change the verbiage of it. Um, the culture in your practice will attract the people that you're supposed to attract. If you are a family zoned chiropractor, um, one of the chiropractors here in our town I walk into our office and I feel like I'm in fairies and fireflies because it looks like this great relaxing place for families. There's a place for kids. There's another chiropractor that I know that really focuses on um, um, athletic um, advancement. And so those it's it's very sporty. Um, everything that refl is reflective of their heart and their specific lifestyle is reflected in their practice, but then they're out serving their community in those ways. So whoever you're wanting to meet with uh, and connect with, find a way to connect with them in the community. If that's sponsoring a sports team, if that's partnering with your pregnancy center and your adoption agencies so that you can provide care for, um, for women that are pregnant with unplanned pregnancies, really take that time to connect, know how you wanna connect and make that happen. Well, I think it's a really nice message to close out with. Um, if people wanted to connect with you or work with you or learn more about you, where can we send them to? Um, you can send them to www.crystalbadorf.com. Um, that's my website. I can get emails and messages through there. I also have a Calendly link that I can send you. And so if anybody would like to have a conversation with me, then we can schedule a conversation and make that connection. Well, Crystal, thanks for being episode 552 of the Cairo Hustle podcast. Congratulations on that, James. That's a big deal. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, it's a labor of love. And uh, I know that we're doing this for a greater cause. And there might be one person that listens to this episode that reaches out to you and you can help facilitate better future plans for them. And, you know, you might be the answer that they've been praying for. Do you know, that is great. That is one of the things that I 
say all the time when I speak, you may be the answer to someone else's prayer. <laughs> that's that's a very specific. Um, that's close to my heart. <laughs> well, I want you to have a great rest of your evening out there in beautiful South Carolina. And uh, I'm going to sign off here from beautiful Colorado and tell everyone you guys are just one story away. Keep hustling. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Thanks for bye for now. Bye. Thanks for listening to Cairo Hustle. Don't forget to subscribe and check back next week to continue hustling.